everyone. It's great to be with you again for the latest episode of Get on the Grid with Jesse Roberts. My guest tonight is Jeff Bassano. He's an author, a Reiki master, a light ascension therapist, trance channel, and a well-known photographer. He's a transformational messenger and master teacher for the teachings from the Archangelic realms. At the age of 40, Jeff found his passion for photography, which helped him create the life he imagined and to discover his life purpose. Jeff channels the energy of Archangel Michael, whose mission is to help us find our passion and purpose in our lifetime. He has published Journey of the Awakened Heart based on the teachings of Archangel Michael. It contains messages and exercises that lead you to discover who you are and why you're here. His essay, For the Love of It, was published in the anthology Audacious Creativity. (laughs) I like the name of that, Audacious Creativity. Mm. Jeff, welcome. I'm so glad to have you on the show. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much, Jesse. It's great to be here. I would like to, at this time, invite our listeners to um, join with Jeff and me to join with the energies of co-creation so that this show gives you the best information to your highest good and best outcome. And with that, we will begin. Jeff, how did you get started on your path? Oh, great question, <laughs> great question, great question. We well, have this a whole goes hour, all the so way help yourself. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, as we all know, we're, we're, we're all always on our path, whether we realize it or not. Um, as, as my teacher, mentor, um, therapist, healer, Robert Baker, uh, said to me back in um, 1999 when I began this path, he said, Jeff, you're going to live your life purpose and divine plan anyway. Wouldn't it be cool if you were conscious for it? Oh, that's and a good point. <laughs> that is basically what we do, isn't it? Isn't it? We're we're raising our awareness and consciousness to ourselves, and and um, like you, and what we're doing, and and our life's plan, our life's purpose, our life's mission, our divine plan. So anyway, it was with Robert. Um, Back in 1999 that I um, connected with him um, and began this this, uh, this inner journey, the, the inner journey back in 1999. But as Robert always said, my, the doorway in, for everything in my life is through photography. And that's how I met Robert. I met Robert through a woman who I actually photographed, Alexandra Bose who introduced me to Robert. So it's been through photography that this inner journey uh, began. And I started working with Robert in 1999 at a place in New York called uh, Children of Light. Uh, Robert passed away two years ago, but he was, he was the person that, be, that, was, my gu- that my, was my guide um, to my inner journey. Um, this day continues to this day, and that's, that's how it all began. That's wonderful. I love the fact that we have so many different ways to find our path. Uh, each guest that I speak with on the show has an entry point, and I think you're the first one to have an entry point through photography, and I think it's just wonderful that these seemingly everyday mundane things that we do can open doors that we have absolutely no idea are there. The, the key to it and what I found, okay, because um, I quit my job, my nine to five job in the World Trade Center in New York City, uh, when I turned forty, which was in 1999, and I left that entire life behind because I found and connected to my passion of photography as an artist. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the key points. That's what one of the things that I realized was I was miserable. I I was dating a woman, and at the time I said, Jeff, you hate your job, you hate your life. The only time you're ever happy is when you're with me. And uh, great words. And one day I was on the subway going to the gym, leaving the World Trade Center, leaving. And actually this is the story that's in Audacious Creativity. Funny, oh. funny. 
But uh, anyhow, the long and short of it is, is that, that she, what she was telling me was I was miserable. I wasn't happy. I wasn't living and connected to my soul's divine plan. So, or, or any passion at all. But I was doing photography. I would gone back to school, and she would always tell me, when you when you pick up that camera, it's it's amazing what you do and how talented you are, and that's what I see in you. And she actually saw it and was very prophetic with it. So the long and short of it is, we I was living a life that I just wasn't enjoying. I was pretty much miserable, and the only time I was happy is when I was with her. I would photograph her. We would have, see music and doing all of these things that I loved doing and she loved doing. So where was I? I was fulfilled and I was happy. When I would go to that day job every day, I was miserable. And what that really showed me when I, and that was around 1993 to 93. But it was when I started working with Robert and doing this work and going within and doing all of that stuff, I realized the universe, God, was telling me, Jeff, you're miserable. You're not living your night life with joy. And then it wasn't when um, I started connecting to my passion of photography that I realized that I was connecting deeply into my joy and consciously my divine plan. So when I said earlier that photography was, is, was my doorway into my life's work of being the messenger of Archangel Michael's teachings, um, it happened through my finding my passion for photography, which is, which was the, is the doorway into another passion and then another passion and another passion. So really it comes down to asking yourself, are you living the life you say you want? And are you enjoying it? And have you found, and do you have a passion for it? Or are you simply like I was, subscribing to an old paradigm that my father taught me of getting a job, getting benefits, and being safe? I think you've hit something right on the head here, uh, Jeff. A lot of people talk to me about this very thing. I'm so miserable. I'm so unhappy. I can't find my way. What's the matter with me? There's nothing the matter with you. It's the fact that you're living that old paradigm that you just talked about. And I think once we realize that we are truly miserable where we are and make the conscious aware decision to do something about it, such as look for your joy, look for your bliss, find out what you really want to do, and pursue that, you're going to stay in that womb of misery, that cocoon of misery. And mm-hmm. I've had people tell me, well, I can't do that. I have to do this. I have to pay the bills. I have to, have to, have to. But there are ways around it if you just decide that there are, yeah? There are. It's actually not around it. It's through it because that yeah. statement <laughs> of I've got to pay my bills, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do this, that's, the, that's your third dimensional thinking. That's the ego mind. That's the ego. Mm-hmm. That's the conditioning of I've got to pay my bills. Yeah, I mean, you have a re- See, it's, it's not that I'm, I've got to pay my bills, I've got to do this. I have a responsibility to myself and my life. And then some people obviously have a responsibility to a family and kids and all that good stuff. And that's all wonderful, and you take that into account. But as Michael has always said, Archangel Michael always said, the decisions and choices that we make in our lives are based upon our divine plan. And when you move into a deep knowingness, a deep knowingness that, yes, this is the next step in my divine plan, If you're connecting to your divine plan, you'll never fail. When I knew that I, it was a step, when when that woman uh, said those words, that was my wake-up call. Those words were my wake-up call. We had long, we had broken up, and I heard those words. The next step was to make the decision to follow my joy and what I did that night and these, these are exercises that that you can do and this is what I did that night when I went home and I sat and I wrote a list what do I want to be when I grow up I was 33 years old and at the top I wrote I got to grow up so what do I want to be when I grow up so I wrote down all of these things that I could do and the list was long and I spent a long time that night on this 
And I wrote down, kept on, what can I do? What can I do? What brings me joy? What can I do? And I wrote all this stuff down. Photography was in there. And then I kept on adding to the list, and I got something to eat. I went back to the list. I meditated on the list. I looked at the list. And then at about 11, 11.30 that night, it was actually in 3D. It felt like that photography lifted itself from the page. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it, it, not, it didn't come into my mind. I literally felt it reverberate in my entire body. In my, in my solar plexus, in my heart. And I went, okay, I got it. And <laughs> the next day, the next day, I devoted every, I stayed at my day job. And um, I got so excited, I called my father. And my father, who was like, as, you know, as much as I was conditioned by my father, my father still was an amazing metaphysician, though he didn't know it, said to <laughs> me, you're not ready to quit your job too much fanfare, too much drama, you will know the day when you quit your job because there won't be any drama or fanfare surrounding it. So what I did, he goes, okay, and then he said, what do you need? And I said, what I need is lights. He goes, and here's the thing, my father, who never really, um, I mean, he provided well, he was great, I loved him, he became my best friend, never really, like, turned it to say, he goes, okay, how much will they cost? I said, all right, I'll, I'll go and test it. So what happened was I was supported from that very moment, and I went out and I bought a light kit, and I devoted every waking moment for the next couple of years to really create and this craft of photography and found a way. Okay, so to the people out there who said, oh, I can't quit my job right now. You see, everybody's looking for the instant hit. I was going, I'm quitting my job tomorrow. Luckily, I called my father who said, no, 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 no. You're not ready to quit your job. But what do you need to eventually quit your job and live the life you say you want. He didn't put it in those words. He was, he was just going, okay, what do you need? I need lights. Okay, so I'm going to support you in, in moving on this pathway to eventually make the transition when it's in your heart and you know it organically and you've connected to the knowingness in your divine plan. Now, he didn't say all of that. I didn't know any of that at the time, but that's what happened. Right. So... So all the people out there who are, I hate my life, I hate my job, I this, that, and the other thing, okay, acknowledge that. If you can acknowledge that right away, I wasn't acknowledging it. I had somebody come into my life and tell me that. So when you acknowledge it, then you go, then I, you go okay, what is the life I want to lead, which is this list that I made. And then it pops out at you. And then luckily I had my father at the time who said, no, 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 you're not ready to quit your job, but I'll support you in eventually quitting your job. And that day will come when you're in full alignment with your soul's divine plan. And you, it will happen, and you will know it, and you will do it. It's sort of that how you eat the elephant one bite at a time. With yeah, one step at a time. Speed. Yeah, lay your groundwork and proceed on that path as you do what else you uh, feel like you have to do right at the moment. Until, right. like you said, you feel like you're in alignment, and that's huge. That's the thing. And then it was it was interesting because I remember one day I was out to lunch. I bring my camera every day, and I was walking around, and all of a sudden, with no drama, I said, "Oh." I need to go back to my office and write a resignation letter today. <laughs> and I went in, typed a letter, walked into my boss's office. My boss looked at me and said, I was waiting for this today. Oh, my goodness. Went back to my office, picked up the phone, called my father. He didn't even say hello. He went, oh, so you did it. <laughs> and I went, yeah. He goes, okay, talk to you later. That's alignment for sure. And it was a knowingness. This, it's the knowingness. It's, it's, the, it's the conscious connection to our divine plan. Now, 
I didn't even know that I was doing any of this. But on some <laughs> level, like earlier when when it said Robert said, wouldn't it be great you're conscious and aware of your soul's divine plan? Now, I wasn't, but we're living it anyway. What I knew deep in my heart is I hit this knowingness. Archangel Michael talks about this all the time, the knowingness in our heart. So then I, I did that, and uh, the day that I left my job was, was the last day of 1998. It was right before I turned 40. And I knew I went, I'm, I'm never going to work again. And this, that, and the other thing. Then when I started studying this, I knew in that what, what, what I did in that moment, I connected to the next step in my divine plan. I've never had to fight work again. I've made a living as a <laughs> photographer that became a doorway into also this wonderful, wonderful life of being a messenger for Michael's messages, doing the inner work and the healing and the personal process. And I built that world of photography in New York City. And then one day I woke up in New York City in this inertia of, oh, my God, I don't even know what to do anymore. Uh. And, and the, I'm telling the story for the people out there who get all like, oh, my God, I have to do this. I can't quit my job. I'm doing this. I'm so conditioned. I have to survive and this, that, and the other thing. And the reason why, that's the reason why I'm telling this story is that a couple of days after that, my friend Maria out here in Los Angeles said, come to L.A. and play. I said, great. Now, I've been coming out here often to shoot. And I said, I made plane reservations, came out. When I got off the plane, I got my rental car. I'm driving up to um, Hollywood where I was staying with a friend. When I got in the car, I was halfway there, and it hit me. I'm moving here. Yeah. And it was so subtle. When I got there, I saw Maria. Maria, I'm moving to L.A. I said, she goes, you said that a million times. No, I'm doing it. When I got back, when I was en route, I called my friend Philip Collins. I said, Philip, I'm going to do this. And he goes, yeah, it's time. What I knew and realized was that part of my divine plan, that journey from the day that I quit my job in 1998 up until that point, that part of my journey and my path was over. And I was ready to take the next step. Michael tells us from time to time, you might be feeling, you know, this. You might be feeling disillusioned. You might be feeling, um, you know, in limbo, you might be feeling a, an urge. Uh, you might be feel called to a new vortex of energy. So it wasn't real. And then I, what I did is I just made all the preparation. I didn't get up and quit and just move to Los Angeles. I moved to Los Angeles seven months later mm -hmm. through the experience of my father saying, um, and my father had passed away for saying, "No, you're not ready to quit your job right now." So I made it a process and then moved out here, and the only reason why I moved was because it was the next step in my divine plan. It had nothing to do with, oh, my God, am I going to find enough work as a photographer in Los Angeles? Yeah. It had well, nothing think, to do with the third dimension. I think that any, anybody who's trying to make changes, no matter where you are on your path, it's always a process. Yes. And if you are comfortable in that process, if it brings you joy, if it's, if it's pointing you in the right direction, you'll definitely know that. Mm -hmm. And if you allow that process to unfold as the universe puts it in front of you, your next step does rather become obvious uh, as you proceed. And like you said, a lot of times you don't see it in the moment, but when you look back at it, you go, oh, well, duh. <laughs> yeah, you know, you go, okay. Um, and and it, it's important to be, um, in my book, Journey of the Awakened Heart, which is actually can help a lot of people make the choice. My book, actually, um, so when I made this choice, it brought up everything. Mm. Oh, my God. 
You know, I made the choice. I, I literally, even though I physically didn't make the choice and I was there, when I made the choice energetically, I made the choice. It didn't matter if I was still living in my apartment in New York. I made the choice to take the next step in my plan and put it in motion. It, it, still, it, it, br- it still brought up all of the stuff underneath it. Oh, my God, I'm sure. leaving here. Oh, my God, you know, everything and, and all that good stuff. So the important thing is to be with everything that it brings up because it's supposed to bring everything up. Right. And what was wonderful about it is that I was I was uh, working on my book uh, with my friend Stephanie Gunning at the time, and I was in the process of, of the editing process. So as she would do what she did and then hand me what she did, I, and I was reading my book, I was reading Michael's teaching of exercises that I have done a million times, that helped me make the tra- may help make the transition easier. When you, when you my read book something helped, like that, it sort of gives you a new perspective on your own life, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but my book, the exercises, lessons, messages, and teachings of Michael in my book, helped me move through the transition of leaving New York to Los Angeles. Sure. That's the wonderful part of the book. I was like, oh my God! So he was doing the exercises. Mm-hmm through what it was bringing up in me, even though I was editing it, and it moved me through my fears and feelings and all of this stuff that was coming up going, oh, my God, I'm leaving New York. I'm, I'm actually going to change my life. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I meant. Um, you, you write something, and then as you go back and reread it through the editing process, or whatever process it is, and I have another light worker friend who's always telling me, read your own books, Jesse. Uh, yeah. Your, the nuances are different as you're reading it with your new perspective, and it will help you move that. One of the things that I've heard said many times is once we step onto our right path, we instigate or we uh, trigger these next steps because once that your foot's on that path, everything you do becomes part of that, and it kind of pulls you along whether you realize yeah. it or not. Yeah, I mean it's it's making that choice. That every, everybody has the knowing. You know, if you're being, if you said my life is miserable, you hate your Jeff, you hate your life, you hate your job. You know, and I I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. Just pay attention to how it all makes you feel. Absolutely. And then then you know go within and make it. If in fact you know that it's that I need to change, I need my life to change, um, you, you move through it. Uh, my book, Journey of the Awakened Heart, is a step-by-step process through that. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to uh, go out and find that and read that myself because the more we talk about it, the more enticing it gets. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a great. I've channeled five different bodies of teachings from Archangel Michael over the years, and. Um, I um, I chose this to be my first book, and I don't know why. It's just like, okay, you know, I've got all of these teachings that I've been bringing since 2006. Um, this came in in 2008, 2009 back in New York, and I just said, I think I'm going to make this a book. Mm-hmm. And that's I what I did. Absolutely. Now, you and, brought up uh, one, of my, one of my heartfelt, hot-button, love-it-love-it topics, and that is Archangel Michael. And I think mm. it's a great segue to this part of the conversation. I had an experience with him just completely unexpected. I was going to do a meditation for the radio show to help get rid of karma. And as I went into this meditation, it was a huge, deep meditation. I'm glad I was recording it at the time. And all of a sudden, there he was. I had never, I won't say I had never met him, but I had never recognized who he was at the time. Before, but I did this time, and the meditation was the most powerful thing I think that's ever come through me, and it has given me a great deal of respect and awe and love for this particular angelic personage or energy or however you want to describe it. So I'm extremely interested in how you connect with him, what your uh, uh, give and take with him, how how do you see yourself in this particular area 
just everything you can think of. I just I want give me a flip top head, pour it in. <laughs> mm. Well, I'm a trans channel. So uh-huh. so what a what happens is, is that um I leave my body. Mhm. And um and the energy and I, I channel other energies as well, but the, we all all channels have a main energy that they that right. that's that's their it's probably their main um angel guide whatever whatever that is and um so I leave my body and um Michael comes in and speaks and it's you know it's a it's a little process my body goes through some gyrations and you know, I have got to catch up to the energy. It comes in, it comes in very powerful. Mike, the um, Archangel Michael's energy is a, um, a masculine energy, so it's very powerful, and it deals with moving from the mind to the heart. So, so that's what happens: is that I, I step aside, and the energy comes through and and speaks through me, um, and people can interact with the energy as we are speaking to each other right now. You can speak mm-hmm. to Michael the same way. That's kind of how this happened with me that time. Um, I felt like I was not there, but I was being spoken to and Mm -hmm. guided and led. And it was a very unique experience. I've channeled other energies before, but nothing just quite like this. Mm. Yeah, if if one hits you, it it hits you. And it's it's always to be aware of it because uh, we all live a multidimensional experience. So... Many, um, all of us channel. It's like well, I'm not. I'm not. What I do is what I, the way I do it, and the way you do it, and the way others do it. It doesn't matter. It's always about the message. Sure. The way I do it is the way, you know, I do it in my divine plan. This is what I was supposed to do. This is the way it was supposed to come through me. But it comes through everybody else, their energies, in in a, in, a, in different ways, consciously, uh, subconsciously, writing it, singing it, playing it, speaking it, mm-hmm. um, drawing it. Painting it, it all—it's all a connection uh, to multi, because we're multidimensional beings. Well, let me ask you a question right here, um, Jeff. Do you feel that any creativity that we have is a connection to the divine energies? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh oh, definitely, definitely. Very cool. Yeah, when Eric Clapton's playing his guitar, it's not Eric. Cl- I mean, he, he here's the, here's the thing. We we all have. This is one of the important things. And then once again, going back to my book, the second half of my book is really about rediscovering, as Michael says, rediscovering and remembering our talents and gifts. Right. And that's we all really have them, important. Whether we know them or not. Yeah, you know what? You know, I part of my divine plan was connecting to my talent and gift um, as a photographer as an artist, but but on a spiritual level, on a deeper level, I connect, uh, the be- I see the beauty in everything and everyone, and I move in and capture the essence of their soul. And that's what I bring out to the world, and that's the, that's the part of what Michael talks about, is moving into the find the essence. So as a photographer, there's something that I see and feel in the moment that I capture, and that is, that's, through some some divine connection of seeing beauty and love and 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 feeling that and because because it's not that it's so much that I'm seeing it I'm feeling it you feel the I can moment relate to that okay you feel the moment and when you feel the moment it's a divine connection it's an energetic connection with you with me and another person Though they might not even know what the heck's going on. I can just see it and feel it, and that's when I go <laughs> click. Like you just okay. feel the moment. Like there's the moment. You feel this intuition that you have. That intuition is guided by multi, multidimensional energies. Whenever I go into a photo shoot or anything, I always call in all my angels and guides, and Michael, uh, guide me today to step out of the way, and you guide me along with me, to the right and perfect moments that I need to capture. That's almost exactly what happens when I'm writing a new song. The chord structure and the words fall into place, and people will say, well, how do you do that? And in the past, I've always said, gosh, it just happens. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I think it's me stepping out of the way and letting whatever divine guidance is is writing that song to uh, give me that information. 
and and the, the 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 reason for us to connect with our talents and gifts because that's what we utilize to express ourselves and as we are expressing ourselves in tandem with our connection to multidimensional sources or energies or god whatever you want to call it divine source energy my angels and guides god or whatever it is we're co-creating that as the human to bring it out into the world that raises a level of resonance and vibration in the world people talk about i want to change the world okay it's not about changing what's happening outside of yourself it's simply about raising the level of resonance and vibration outside of ourselves but the first step is raising that level of resonance and vibration within ourselves first and then we're just an emanation of that we're just being it it cascades out to everybody around you when you do that, yeah? So that's the importance of of recognizing uh, your talents and gifts. My book is begins with, Michael came to us one day and said, we're going to be bringing you um, a body of teachings called Who Are You and Why You Are Here. That's what he called it. Hmm. So the first part of my book, is a, and it's, two, ten, it's, it's, it's a ten-step process in each section so the first one is who are you so it's a 10-step process of moving within to connect with you to know who you are and once we know that the next part of the book the second part of the book is why am i here why who are you and why you are here why you are here is to connect with your passion your purpose your talents and gifts so you can direct use that to direct the expression of you out into the world based upon what you're here to bring to the world. So it's a step by it's, a, it's finding out who who you are first and then your talents and gifts and then bring out out to the world um, that in that process. Sounds like this book should be required reading for everybody on the planet. <laughs> hey, that would be great. <laughs> yes, on many levels. <laughs> Yeah. But it's a, it's a journey. It's a journey. That's why it's oh. called Journey of the Awakened Heart because Absolutely. once you – because the idea is, is this, is, and, and probably a lot of the people, you know, many of your listeners, they, you know, they, they could be at a place, they're saying, oh, my God, like how we just started this, this conversation is, you know what, I'm really not enjoying my life mm-hmm. or I hate my life or, hey, hey, Jeff, you hate your job, you hate your life. The only wow. time you're happy is when. That's the question to ask. When am I in joy? When am I this? So there might be many out there, and there are many, many people who are out there right now saying, wow, I'm disillusioned. I, 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 really, I feel like I'm just surviving life. I'm just going through the motions. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Wow. Um, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, saying all of that stuff. I, I'm, and I'm, I, I hate my job. I hate this. And then what happens is the ego just says, "Well, you got to pay your bills. You got this. You got that. You got well. Okay, that's great. Let's take a well, little. I'm gonna. Journey I'd like to it. interject here. You can love you can love your ego, but you, because it's part of you, but you don't have to listen to it all the time because not always is this con- counsel very um, uplifting to you. Or, or as Rob, yeah, definitely, and as, or as Robert Baker used to always say, um, when I was with him, you know, doing a session, and he'd go, okay, what's coming up now? And I always remember saying, okay, let it be there. It, it, Michael's very first teaching that he ever brought, which was in 2006 in a, in a body of teachings that I channel called he called 120 day teachings and literally it was 120 days that i for four months every week my friend peter frame and i got together and brought this in joel anastasi a partner in the angel news network with me uh, took that and made the workbook called life mastery the very first teaching was acceptance and compassion so when we're in this place robert would always say okay jeff what's coming up and then you would go in and go i'm frightened i'm unsure i'm unknowing i'm there okay can you just let it be there just let that be there except with compassion that that was coming up doesn't mean that you've got to go into it 
And you just let that be there. I'm anxious. I'm nervous. I'm frightened. I'm scared. I'm angry. I'm sad. Okay, just let let it be there. I'm I'm doubtful. Let the doubt be there. Okay, that's that's cool, and that's what I'm feeling. But what do you want? And you, and you just hear how I said that. Oh, the right, doubts, yeah. there, the anger, there. Oh, but what do you want? So you take all of that, you have your feelings, you, you're com- accepting with compassion all of that, but the next question is, what do I want? And then feel the difference when you say, what do I want? And then all of those feelings. There's a difference in the energy. And then what you want will drive you by, by because when you accept all the feelings, I'm frightened. Like, like maybe the, the people that say to you, well, I have I have all I have my job. I got to pay my bills, and this, underneath that is a fear. Right. There are feelings coming up, and if you can have all of those feelings in the moment and allow your ego its voice and say thank you for sharing, I hear you. Thank you for sharing. However, right. this is what I want. Good point. And you'll see the difference as you'll that'll be the motivating factor because the what I want is your God source. It's your divine plan. Because it's not really what you want. It's like, wait, if it raises my resonance and vibration, that must be in my divine plan. Right. Well, you can have all these feelings. You just don't have to embrace them and entertain them and wallow in them, right? You don't have to indulge or sink into them. Right. Many people, then, what they do is they have they have their these feeling. Oh, I'm so sad. I'm angry. I'm this, and they and they either do one of two things. They either sink into the feelings, or they indulge into indulge the feelings. Right. As opposed to saying, because what happens is, is the feelings that can really. I mean, be very, very strong. And the reason why they're strong is because we suppressed all of those feelings for so long. Once we take one step towards saying, what do I want, and this is not the life I'm leading, and move closer to it, Michael always says, the louder the feelings will become. Huh. The, the stronger the feelings will be. So, if actually, so my friend Craig Marshall, uh, used to be a self-realization uh, fellowship monk for 35 years, says this. If there's something that I want to do or in my life I, need to, I want to move towards to and I'm feeling intense fear, then I know I'm on the right track. That's a good litmus test. <laughs> okay. But, what, but what's the exercise or what does he do? The next question is, okay, Craig, that's great. So what do you do? He goes, well, I have my feelings. But my litmus test, as you just said, is um, if I'm feeling a deep fear about this, wow, I need to move towards that if it's what I say I want. See, the whole thing is Michael always says, asks, it asks you, so what do you want? What do you say you want? That's a great exercise to do. Write down um, what, do you, what, what do you want? What do you want your life to, to be? What is this and that? And that's what you say you want and then be with the feelings that come up, then if you take the action to move towards it, those feelings will get more intense and stronger because those are the feelings that we have repressed and suppressed that if, in fact, we allowed ourselves to feel those feelings, we'd be living the life we wanted. We'd quit our job to do what we love to do, but it's the feelings, it's the conditioning underneath that that holds us in the old. Right, it's that uh, feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Yeah, that's it. Feel that's that's what Craig does. I'm feeling the fear, and I'm going to move towards it and see what it reveals. That and step off the cliff and know that you'll either be taught to fly or there'll be a place to stand. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or actually, actually, you know, you know something, Chessie, as, as we were talking about earlier, um, the 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 gradual step, like when when I. When, I, when it hit me, I got my revelation that I wanted to follow photography, and my reaction to that was jump off the cliff and go in and hand in my resignation the next day. And my father <laughs> said, you're not ready. 
Right. One of the one of the things that Michael talked about, we connected with Michael a couple of months ago, and he talked about it's not about jumping off the cliff into the deep end of the pool. You can make that choice energetically. Like, for example, when I was moving to California, I didn't go home, pack up my my apartment, and leave. It was a seven-month process to make all the arrangements accordingly and go through, because if we're doing this work, it's not so, so much about just um, or jumping off the cliff and going. Um, whenever we're, we're taking an endeavor, and a spiritual endeavor, which is our life, we have to attune our bodies and move through it to really turn to come to that place where, where we're making the choice in the knowingness and it's, and it's, and it's without drama. So I it's like not that. so much that, yeah, it's not so much as if you run and quit your job tomorrow and, and jump off the deep end. You can, start, you can make the choice that I'm going to do this and then make the energetic choice. Like I said earlier, when, when I knew that I was moving to California, I made the energetic choice. I, I said to the universe, I'm moving. I knew that I'm moving. Now, I didn't go back home and start packing my apartment and move to California. I made the energetic choice through the knowingness and I allowed the process, as Robert Bake would always say, allowed the process of life to take care of itself and your answers were re- revealed in the process. So I didn't even come home and say that I was going to move in six months. I said, I'm moving. I right. am moving. And I made the declaration. I wrote it down and put it in my refrigerator. I am moving to Los Angeles. I didn't know when. I just said, okay, I'm going to allow this process, but I have just made the choice. I am quitting my job to live the life that I want. Write it down, put it on your refrigerator, but it's about making every choice that we make is a commitment to ourselves. Sort of and then you say, the okay. Allow, yeah? yeah, then you allow the process of that, and if in fact, you allow the process and you have made the choice energetically, it will all transpire perfectly. And then you will walk in one day and say, I'm quitting my job, and you're aligned. It's because it's all about alignment. Some people say, you know what, I'm moving next week and do it. And that may work. But um, I think from earlier, it's just it's allowing the process of life to, to take care of itself but also catch yourself saying, oh, yeah, I'll move. And then you just are drawn back into the old life because what we're really doing is moving out of comfort zones. I think a lot of it, too, is the conscious awareness of the energetic decision that you make, wouldn't you say? That's it. Conscious Conscious awareness of the energetic decision that we make. So we're telling the universe and directing the universe that, yes, I've felt it, I've connected to that part of my divine plan, and I'm saying yes. And when you do that, that's like what I was talking about earlier. You have put your energetic foot on that path, and Mm -hmm. it's going to draw you into your next thing just by the process of the fact that you have made this energetic, and I'm going to say it, leap off the cliff. You don't have to leap physically. But no. that, that obvious, conscious, aware, yes, this is where I need to be, is that uh, starting point for that particular part of your journey. Right. right yeah, you know what? I think you, I think, I think you just actually clarified it. Was you're, you're jumping off the cliff energetically by making the choice within ourselves. So that could, yeah, I make that choice right away. But you don't have to jump off the cliff in the third dimension right away. No. That's the no, clarification. That, That's perfect. That that conscious, aware, energetic choice, I think, is one of the most important things that we can learn how to do and learn to trust. And when you do that, and I can speak from experience, when you do that and it is in alignment with your path, there is a calm and a peace that comes a, around that decision that you exactly. didn't see coming. And yep. that, to me, is my 
flag that, yes, this is where you need to be going. Yep, yep. If you feel it, 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 it my friend Alexandra used to say this, Jeff, it should be easy. <laughs> I'm all for easy. Relationships, well, I'm <laughs> relationships should be easy. Everything in life should be easy. You'll have your challenges from time to time. But for the, you know, when it's not easy and the path isn't easy, um, then it's about seeing, you know, why isn't this easy? Because look at uh, great exercises. Look at what came, had come into your life that was very easy and in alignment. And then look at the stuff that, you know, maybe our egos or that fight, the need to fight to get it the way we want it to be. Like, oh, wow, I just met this person. I want to have that relationship and it's not easy, and I'm going to fight to get that person to be the person that I want them to be. Oh, that never works. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But that's might be you know that's an example of of, of things. Right. And you know, Alexander used to say to me all the time, Jeff, it, it should be easy. I feel that too. When we run into a situation that isn't easy, and I talk about this all the time on the show and in my teachings and everything, I will say, okay, this is not easy. I've got a lot of challenges here. What lesson am I missing? Yeah. Definitely. Or why okay. is this nasticity, if you'll pardon my use of a silly word, but I like it, uh, come into my life? And if I look at it and say, okay, what's my lesson here? And once I connect with that lesson, the roadblocks just seem to dissolve and melt away. Yeah. I don't care whether it's uh, an issue at work, whether it's an issue in a relationship, whether it's an issue in your own head, whether it's a health issue. I don't care what it is. If you see patterns or after you start seeing patterns, something kind of jumps up out of the clear blue and, and you wonder, where in the world did this come from? If you look at it from the perspective of, okay, what lesson did I miss, it will come together for you and that's when the easy comes back. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yeah. It's 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 and the thing to always keep in mind, and that's that's so cool and that's so great. The thing to keep in mind too is that it has nothing to do with anything or anyone outside of ourselves. Absolutely. It's us. It's all about us. It's all about you know the the lesson that you're looking for that we're looking for in these situations is what do I have to learn about me. You know, am I moving into a place that am I constantly connecting with people who are unavailable? Mm -hmm. What is that? You know, whatever lesson it is, and then move within and go, okay, let me take, a, let me look in the mirror and find out what's the mirror here. What's the mirror here? What is this mirroring back to me? What do I need to learn? And that's exactly what you just said. What's the gift? And I think too, that once once we realize this and can be grateful and in appreciation for the lesson, no matter how hard it was on you, that's when you really take a big leap, a big step, a big growth spurt, a raising of your energies, however you want to describe it. But yep. it's that being being appreciative for the fact that your guidance has stepped in and said, okay, you're not listening, let's smack you with this and see if you catch on. Robert and Baker used to call it, Robert Baker would, actually Gabriel, Robert, Robert was a trans channel, many energy, trans channel, many energy, main was the energy of Archangel Gabriel. And uh, Gabriel used to say, um, you know, there's things that we'll learn easily. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes you need the cosmic two by four to whack you across the back of the head. I've always called it a clue by four because if you're paying attention, you do get a clue, and that's when you turn around and go, oh, okay, I get it. Um, and Gabriel used to say also that, um, you know, it, it might take you two, three, and four times to go through the same thing to finally mm -hmm. get, the, uh, get, the, get the message. Right. And I yeah, can vouch yeah. for that and, because uh, I'm a very <laughs> stubborn person. <laughs> Yeah. Not well, proud it, of it, it, but it's just me. Yeah, I mean, because we, we, we have this way we think with everything's supposed to be as opposed to the way it, you know, it is in our divine plan. And, you know, and then um, it's not, it might not always be the package we're looking for. Um, right. I mean, in my photography career, 
you know, to prove that it's it's a divine plan. Things that happened in my photography career that I never, ever even thought about <laughs> that came about because I was trying to do something else. Mm-hmm. I made. I got to shoot a Broadway show, um, and and subsequently shot a couple of Broadway shows because I had this focus, this 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 unconscious focus on wanting to photograph this certain recording artist, and I was determined to photograph that recording artist, and. I went to, um, I was at uh, the South by Southwest Music Festival in Austin, Texas, and I looked at the, you know, and I was there shooting with a magazine, and I would looked at the schedule, and I'd go, oh, Grace Potter is playing here. You know, I had met her, and she's now a big star, but I want, I want to shoot her first album on Holly Records. I'm going to go and do this. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go there, and I went there, and... Before Grace Potter, Paula Cole was playing. Now, I'm sure everybody out there loves and knows Paula Cole. She's an amazing artist. I went, oh, cool. So I grabbed this lawn chair right in front of the stage, and I sat there, and Paula came on, great, great show, and I just started shooting. The end of Paula's set, this woman comes up to me. She goes, oh, you're shooting with Paste Magazine. Um, I said, hey, how you doing? And... Um, she, I go, what do you do? She goes, oh, I'm Paula's publicist. I work for uh, um, Decca Records. I'd love to see those photos. I'm not even, oh, yeah, no problem. I'll show you the photos. <laughs> All right? Yeah, yeah. My third-dimensional ego focus was on waiting for Grace to hit the stage after that. Uh-huh. So I, took, I took her card, gave her my card. Here's how the universe works. I go back to my hotel that night. The next morning, they had a continental breakfast. Who's standing online with Tracy, the woman I met the night before? Uh Jeff, remember, I really, really want to see those photographs. And this, that, and the other thing. Great. And, and, um, And I get back to New York. The first email I get back from is from her. Jeff, can I see those photographs? Well, the long and short of it was I never got to shoot Grace Potter. But Decca Records offered me this job about going and following their artists cool. in different places. And then I went, I shot Paula Cole's record release party. They paid me a lot of money to do that. And then they said, oh, would you go and shoot Boys to Men? And I was like, great. So I traveled with Boys to Men to this event, shot them. At that event, I meet the producer of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof on Broadway. All because okay. I wanted to shoot Grace Potter and never did. <laughs> my ego, my thing was I wanted to go and shoot Grace Potter. My divine plan had other, because as, as my good friend Paul Tonelli, who used to be the senior minister at, at Unity of New York, would always say, folks, when you understand that it's a divine plan and not your plan, you'll be much more fulfilled. So that story was I had my plan, <laughs> but my divine plan took took place, and I moved to a place that I never even imagined. I never thought about shooting a Broadway show. What? What? Never. It was never even in the realm of my consciousness. So that's the point. You, wanna, you know. So I. Want to make I, the universe I, laugh? Tell them your plans. Yeah, and so the <laughs> thing about it is, is that you know. I was like, wow, that is the perfect example in my life of, of, not, of being unconscious or to, to the road that was my divine plan was leading me to. But the thing about it is that I said yes to all those things along the way, and I really wasn't realizing it until I sat with Robert one day, and Robert said, let's go through that. Mm-hmm. And I went, wow. Wow. He goes, well, Jeff, you know, then that's when he came up with the thing. Wouldn't it be, it's this, the, the, the reason for this work, part of the reason for this work, this inner work you do, is to become conscious of your divine plan. <laughs> I, and I've right. never, wor- I mean, I've never worked with Grace Potter. I mean, who knows, but 
she was the proxy. She was the bait. She was the carrot that the universe was giving me so my divine plan could fall into place. And that's the thing. A lot of times, and you mentioned this before earlier in in the show, but we as people in this third third dimensional vortex we're in, miasma is how it seems to me sometimes, we get caught up in what the package is going to look like. It's going to be green with a purple bow and a yellow tag, and and that's what we're looking for, so we miss the other ones that come down the conveyor belt because we aren't looking for them. And that becoming consciously aware of what's going on energetically around you is just absolutely phenomenal. Whether you realize it's going to take you to your next step or not, but being there, and some people call it being in the right place at the right time, but you weren't just in the right place at the right time. You were saying yes to the right things and people at the right time. And that well, I was just, well if the key to it is, is one of the things that I learned from Robert that actually his grandmother said to him, right, he said, he would, Robert would always tell the story, my grandmother would look at me and say, Robbie, just say yes. Yes. Yeah. Just say yes. Say yes to everything. You and they will figure out if you can't do it or it's not supposed to be and all that. Cause say yes to everything. That and and that just stuck into my head. So I always say, you know, I mean, it's not about saying yes to everything. It's about discernment, using a discernment of saying yes, because you'll feel it. You know, you don't have to make the decision right away. If somebody comes to you and says, asks you to do something, you could say, okay, let me get back to you in a couple of minutes. Close your eyes, go within, or take your pendulum out and say, yes, yes no. And then feel what you feel. If it raises your resonance and vibration when you say yes, then say yes. If it, when you say no and it lowers your right, r- vibration, uh, then say yes. If you say no and it raises your resonance and vibration, then you say no. Right. It's all, all about what you feel inside of you, um, you know, but, and that's how Robert made it from this, this lumberjack town up in Western Canada, north of Vancouver, to doing great things in New York City. He just said yes along the way. Awesome. And, and that, and Chessie, that goes back to us um, energetically, like when you're feeling you're at a crossroads, um, the first exercise in, in, in my book is about moving within taking a look at where you are, the, 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 the question to always ask in that moment is, where am I, where am I, where am I? Then you move through it, and then it ends very simply with three questions. Uh, is, is change important in your life? Must your life change or something like that? And then you answer the yes or no. And then the next question is, can you change? The answer yes or no. The next question is, will you change? The answer is yes or no. And that last question goes back to what we were just talking about, about jumping off the cliff energetically. Right. Will I change? Yes. The universe goes, cool. Now we'll take you on on your journey to change that. Absolutely. Well, Jeff, it's been awesome talking with you. I have really enjoyed this conversation, and I think our, our listeners probably got a lot out of it, too. And uh, I'm not going to have you give out your information because I'll post it on the show so that everybody can uh, copy and paste it and get hold of you and all of that. So if I don't have it, please be sure that I do. Um, That way everybody can connect with you and and ask questions and maybe make changes that they'd like to through the conversation that we've had today. Please don't have to. Cool, because I do, I do. I do do one, you know, one-on-one sessions with people, and um, wonderful. And we do have a uh, a monthly uh, Michael gathering that people can join. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. Online. Well, thanks for be being on the show the world, again. Too. Don't don't hang up. I've got a little bit of housekeeping uh, to clear up with you after we finish recording. But I want to oh, cool. thank all of our listeners for being here with us on the show today. If you would like to send in a question or a suggestion for a topic that you'd like covered on the show, please send your question, your suggestion, or your request to me at chessie at chessieroberts.com. You can find all of my information at chessieroberts.com, and that's got all my classes and programs and everything. 
My music is at archersmeadow.com. In my book, Evolving into Self from the Puppet to the Master, which is the story of my evolution from the cradle to the grid, is on Amazon.com. And I think maybe it fits in really well with what Jeff and I have been talking about this last hour because I evolved out of absolute unknowing. I was unconscious my entire life until all of a sudden I wasn't, and this is the story of how that came about. And i got to tell you, in writing it, it sort of threw me for a loop. <laughs> but I want to thank you for listening. Come back any time to hear Get on the Grid with Jesse Roberts. Have a great time till I see you again. Bright blessings. Bye-bye.